All right, Makana. So part of the reason I brought you on today was to talk about the AFC North, um, which is, in my opinion, one of the better divisions in the NFL, at least on paper. You know, you got the Ravens and the Bengals who have been consistent consistent playoff teams for the last couple of years. I think the Browns, um, not only do they have a really good offseason, but I think they have the ability to be significantly better than they were last year. Um, and, you know, I think the North is is one of those divisions where it's going to be a dogfight every week. You know, the Steelers, they're never an easy win either with Mike Tomlin and that defense. So really quick, before we kind of jump into the specifics of it, do you want to give me your just quick thoughts about how the AFC North is going to shake out this year? Yeah, I'm going to say that – I'm going to say that the Ravens do end up winning the division. Um, I think the Bengals are going to finish second. I think the Steelers are going to finish third. And I think that the Browns are going to finish fourth. And I think I've said that every year for the last five years. But I actually yeah. – I think that, once again, I just think that's how it pans out, even though I think the Browns are decent. It's not the 2014, 15, 16 Browns. With the greatest coach of all time, Hugh Jackson? Some would say. Some would say. Some might say, yes. Some might say. Um, but, like, they're still not as good as the Steelers, I don't think. Um, even though I'm not a huge Kenny Pickett guy, I think that the Steelers' defense and being coached by Mike Tomlin is a major advantage. And Mike Tomlin, I think, is by far the best coach in the division. Um, I think the other coaches are, are actually not amazing. I think Harbaugh's probably the second best, but, like, I mean, I, I don't really have Harbaugh as a top 10 coach. Um, and then I don't think Taylor's a top 10 coach either. So it's just like, you know, whether or not the Ravens are able to figure it out with Todd Munkin quick enough is they'll win the division. Because if you look at recent years and everybody that's commenting already, that's like, how oh, dare you? How oh, dare you um, choose the Ravens over the Cincinnati Bengals? They keep winning the division. Bro, every time Lamar's healthy, to all you people, the Ravens are winning the division, and then he gets hurt, and then they lose the lead of the division. That's what happens every year, okay? So if Lamar's yeah. healthy, they're going to be winning the division, all right? And I hate when everyone says, well, the Ravens keep losing the division. No. And to your point, you just, mentioned, uh, you just mentioned Todd Munkin. I think part of the reason that Lamar's hurt every year is because Greg Roman just runs read option up and down the field every drive. I mean – just even from what I've been hearing from Lamar, from what I've been hearing from the Ravens organization, what I saw from Georgia last year, we know the Ravens are going to want to throw the ball and have a much more vertical passing attack than they've had in years past. So I think not only will that benefit them having added Zay Flowers and having ha added Odo Beckham, but I think that'll benefit Lamar Jackson as in he won't get beat up as much. I mean, he's not taking as many hits consistently. So hopefully, um, obviously, we all hope Lamar can stay healthy. Um but yeah, let's get into the Ravens for a second because, like I said, they did add a few couple. They did add a couple of receivers um, in the off season. But what were some of the big uh, losses you think they had in free agency or any positions that they didn't address that they maybe should have? Um, I think the biggest loss was Calais Campbell. I think he was he was the leader on the Ravens defense. He was the guy that set the tone on the defensive line in a very young. You know, very young group of guys. I mean, outside of him, it was Matabike, Travis Jones, um, Adafe away, and and Tyus Bowser. I guess Tyus Bowser's a little bit older. He's about like twenty six or twenty seven, but like mm -hmm. very young guys. I think he losing him was huge because he was playing Pro Bowl level football, and ended up. I I think he made the dumbest decision he could have possibly made because he said he wanted to play in a contender, and then he went to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I don't. I don't understand that. I don't know why, I was I don't like, know why the Falcons signed him. That made no sense. Um, but yeah, good for Clay. So I'm rooting for you. Um, some people may say Chuck Clark. I thought Chuck Clark sucked. I wanted him gone two years ago. And um, you guys got Kyle Hamilton anyway. So it's not like exactly. it's not like you guys are in a bad position there. Yeah. And Roquan's probably going to call the defense now because um, Chuck Clark had the green dot. But he called, I mean, he called the defense in Chicago for all those years. And then getting yeah. traded, you know, you're not going to call the defense and you get traded in the middle of the season. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, like yeah. some people may say Marcus Pierce was a big loss. I think Marcus Pierce sucked. Um, again, like I think him coming off of his significant injury, missing a full season, he was slow last year. He wasn't getting interceptions. He was getting burnt consistently. And I know a lot of Ravens fans really like him because he brings energy. But if you're going to go for picks, you have to get some. And he is yeah. not getting them anymore. Yeah. So talking about the Ravens for a second, um, do you think the Ravens are in a position if they stay healthy and if they're able to, you know, have a full let's let's say let's call it 
14, 15 game season from Lamar. Um, how do you think that offense is going to look relative to the rest of the league? Do you think that this is a top five offense? Do you think they're talented enough? Do you think like, like give me your thoughts on their offense for a second. I think the offense is going to be great. Um, and I think what's funny is the Ravens had a great offense with Lamar last year. I mean, there were games where they were putting up, I mean, people saw the, uh, the Miami game. They put up an insane amount of points. The defense let them down. Yeah. And, even with Greg Roman, who I hated, I think he sucked. The Ravens were still able to put up points in a lot of games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 2019, the Ravens were the best offense in the NFL. 2020, with Lamar Jackson, they were still probably a top five offense. 2021, it, it kind of went a little bit downhill because it was just like, okay, Greg Roman, you've called the same play for three yeah. straight years. But – this is absolutely a top five most talented offense. And and a lot of people will hear me say that and be like, they'll just look at wide receiver, running back, tight end, not look at the quarterback and not look at the offensive line. Yeah. Look at what they gave the Eagles success last year. It was offensive line and it was and it was quarterback and and a couple of wide receivers. But the Ravens now, like they were a top five offense with terrible wide receivers. And now mm-hmm. they actually have I, I'm not saying great. I think they have competent. They have startable, yeah, average. Average wide receiver core um, in the NFL, and then their offensive line is is nasty, and they have Mark yeah. Andrews. Like, I think yeah. this offensive line is drastically underrated. And Isaiah Stanley. Likely, I mean, I'm not going to count him out either. I know you're a big Isaiah Likely fan, so yeah. um, talk about the Ravens. I also really like a lot of the young defensive guys on the Ravens as well. I mean, I know yes. we talked about the loss of Clay's Campbell, but um, who is the guy from Michigan? I'm blinking out. Dave, is it David, David Ajabo? Ajabo? Yeah, David Ajabo. He's going to be able to come in this year. Um, Kyle Hamilton, I mentioned, I think Marlon Humphrey's still holding it down. And then you guys yep. got Roquan in the middle. So I think that, um, that you guys are pretty set there. So the Ravens, I think we all kind of know are a really good team in the NFL, but the team that most people would have, I think winning the North would be the Bengals. Um, and when you said that, I think the Ravens, you think the Ravens would win initially, I didn't believe you, but I'm thinking about it. And to be honest with you, the Bengals got worse this off season. Like they did not get better. And you know, they have a limited amount of time. This is probably the last year that they have before Joe Burrow's going to have to get paid, before Jamar, uh, Jamar Chase going to have to get paid, T. Higgins might have to get paid. Like, they are kind of in win, like, quickly mode because of those contracts impending. Um, so let's talk about the Bengals for a second. The obvious, I think, biggest competitor to the Ravens in the division. In terms of, like, if they can repeat their success, if they can sustain the formula that they've had the last couple of years with, you know, at minimum losing in the AFC championship game, what do you think the, what do you think the end result for the Bengals this year is going to be? Losing in the playoffs. Like, like I don't think they have the recipe to win the Super Bowl. And I made a a YouTube short about like, I don't think the Bengals are going to win because their defense got worse. Mm -hmm. And, their secondary was actually pretty good last year. And I know a lot of people hate on Eli Apple, but he had a lot of good games. Um, yeah. And, you know, they lost him. They lost, you know, one of the better safeties in the NFL, Jesse Bates. They lost um, two. They lost Jesse Bates and Von Bell. They also lost Von Bell. Like, they just, like, like that's huge. And then there's questions going on with Joe Mixon. Yeah. And he's getting older as a running back and he's getting worse. Like he's not as good as he was two years ago. He's still a good player, but like, I mean, I don't necessarily see Jamar Chase getting better. Um, I don't necessarily see Joe Burrow getting better. Um, I think they're just at kind of what you can be with their skill sets. And I think Jamar Chase is a top two, maybe the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of his game, and I know a lot of people. But you say he's him. closer. To, he's not. He's not totally. Um, he's close to his ceiling. Like he's not going to get much better than he is right now. Is yeah, what you're saying. yeah. Because I think what he does, he does exactly what he does perfectly. Mm-hmm. Incredibly physical, incredibly athletic, and makes a ton of big plays. And yeah. like, could he develop his route running? Yes, but that's not what he's going to use anyway. Yeah. So like when people talk about, oh, who's the best receiver? Everyone brings up uh, Jettis. Everyone brings up, you know, Devontae. It's like, why isn't Jamar Chase in that conversation? It's because he's not as well-rounded as those guys. Yeah. But who cares? That's yeah. not the offense. People people right. were putting Michael Thomas as the best receiver in the NFL. And what did he do? He, he did one thing. Ran slant routes. Exactly. 
That's what that's damn right. Insane seasons. That's damn right. Um, so yeah, I think the Bengals. I, I do still think that they are going to be a, a playoff team, but I wonder if I'm going to put them in the same tier as teams like the Chiefs and the Eagles and and you know the 49ers and everything like that. People get mad at me, you know. Maybe we'll see you later this week in a video, but I don't think I don't have that same level of faith in the Bills either. So um, we'll we'll see with them. But kind of wrapping up this divisional preview, um, you gave us your order in the beginning. Let's talk about the Browns for a second because I think the Browns are every single year. The Browns are what I like to call good on paper. Uh, you look at the Browns roster and you're like, oh, this is a pretty good team. Like this could win, you know, eleven games, ten games, whatever. And then every year they disappoint, with the exception of like 2020 when they won the one playoff game against Pittsburgh. Take me through what it's like to be able to just beat up on the Browns twice a year, every year, and kind of what you think they're going to look like this year with a Deshaun Watson, who has now had a whole offseason. He's going to have had a preseason. He's going to have been in, in Cleveland for a year. Do you see a dramatic improvement with Deshaun Watson and in the, in the Browns? Uh, talk me through that. Yeah, I mean, like, I think the Browns, everyone kind of misconstrues them because they're no longer, again, that team from, you know, 2016, 2017 um that sucked and it's like they're they're a decent football team the problem is they play in a really tough division and they just have never had the coaching that can you know kind of elevate them they yeah. just rely on their star players and they have some good ones you know denzel ward miles garrett nick chubb um obviously now they have deshaun watson and i think deshaun watson is going to be good this year they added some wide receivers um, so they're not going to be, you know, incompetent at the wide receiver position, but like really what they try and do is they try and run the football with Nick Chubb, yeah, control the clock and went on defense, but they haven't had a good enough defense to where that works. All right. And then really quick ending with the Steelers. Um, what are your thoughts on the Steelers? I think they're definitely the most boring team in the division, but in my opinion, they're, they're always just solid. Like they're always just going to be well coached. They're going to play good defense. They're never going to be an easy win. Um, but how do you kind of view the Steelers relative to the division? Yeah, beating TJ Watt is very difficult. And it's, yes. it's probably the only team in the NFL where you go up against them. And it's about beating the defense. Mm -hmm. But that's what they are. You have to beat TJ Watt. He is a game wrecker. And Mike Tomlin is going to coach that offense to be good enough to allow the defense to win the games. Like, that's what they do. They win nine games every year. Yeah. I think, though, now with um with you guys getting rid of Greg Roman, I think they definitely have the worst offensive coordinator in the division. Um, So that is – Honestly, I'm going to say is Matt Canada may be worse than Greg Roman. <laughs> yeah, honestly, he, he might have been already. I mean, he he's in contention for, like, worst OC in the league, in my opinion. Um, history. In, the, in, in professional sports history, he's the worst coach. No. Um, but – they did improve a lot. They improved the trenches, which to me is a very dangerous thing for the Steelers. So we'll see where they go. But you have them getting third in the division. I'm pretty sure that's talent-wise they might be fourth. But I think Tomlin, again, does give them a little bit of an edge. T.J. Watt does give them a little bit of an edge to maybe uh, compete a little bit more. But I don't see them as a playoff team or like maybe a serious playoff team. They might be like a seven seed or something. But I don't necessarily see them as a team that's going to like go out and win a playoff game and you know compete for a Super Bowl realistically. But yeah. we'll see. So that's kind of the preview of the AFC North. Thank you, Makana, for coming to join, and um, I hope that your Baltimore Ravens do well, and I hope that I can see you in – where's the Super Bowl this year? Where's the Super Bowl head, uh, headed this year? Ooh. It's a great question. not San Francisco. No, New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. It is New Orleans. So I hope to see uh, the Ravens and the Seahawks in New Orleans this year, going against each other <laughs> in February. Okay, so I, – I, I didn't know the Seahawks were playing the Saints this year. Anyway, 